this is all very, very important. But the problem is that everybody's focused. Everybody in real estate is focused on the first one, right? Oh, we're just going to make more. We're just going to make more. We're just going to make more. It's going to make up for everything. They never figure out how to spend less and because they never figure out how to spend less. They never have anything left over to invest. And because they never have anything left over to invest, guess what they don't do or they don't do enough of, they don't do enough investing. Hi, I'm Noelle with Today's Brew, where top producing real estate agents and coaches share their tips and tricks on taking more listings, making more money, and having fun doing it. Today, I want to welcome back Michael Hellickson, founder and CEO of Club Wealth Coaching. What's happening, Noelle? How are you? Welcome back. Now, what is this fun stuff you're talking about? You're saying we're supposed to have fun making money? Yeah, making money. Duh. <laughs> Lots of it, right? Um, let's talk about you a little bit. So Club Wealth, what does that mean to you? How did you come up with the name? Okay, so, well, first of all, so there's credibility behind the message. I want everybody to know that I'm not just some guy off the street. I've actually sold a house or two. In fact, at one point in time, I was the number one real estate agent on planet Earth. I've probably listed uh, and sold more real estate than anybody that's ever walked the planet. Uh, and uh, so, <laughs> well, I mean, what are your numbers? I, what are your numbers? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, any given time uh, back in the day for a very long time, I was doing 120 to 180 transactions every month, uh, closings, right? And then I was carrying about 750 listings at any given time. Uh, I was listing 50 to 75 houses myself each month, not counting my team and not counting REO. REO was about half of what I did. Uh, and so, yeah, a lot of, a lot of business. Uh, and, uh, and that's all fine and good. I only say that, I say it not to brag, but I say it because there's an awful lot of people out there that want to give you guys advice that really, frankly, have no business giving it because they've never even sold real estate or not much of it. Uh, <laughs> and so I just believe that if you want to climb to the top of Mount Everest, you need a guide who's been to the top of Mount Everest before. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Yes. No, we're so lucky to have you on. No, oh, I appreciate that's nice of you to say that, Noel. But let's talk about it. so you said how did we come up with the name? You know, the name is Club Wealth. And it's really important, you know, and really this speaks to the core of what real estate agents really ought to be doing. It's not just listing and selling more homes. Mm -hmm. Although listing and selling home, more homes is very helpful, we really need to be focused on building actual wealth. So what does that really mean? If I'm gonna really build wealth. I've got to do three things. It's very simple. Watch this. I'm going to grab my handy dandy whiteboard over here. Check this okay. out. Get rid of the chair. We're getting, we're getting down to business now. Let's get serious. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So check it out. This is the formula. There's only three things you do to build wealth. It's the most duplicatable, repeatable, easy to do formula ever. It is make more, right? That's one step in the building wealth formula is make more. But check this out. That's not us. We've got to spend less. Ah, right? the tricky Very one. Less spend less. But that's not enough. It, it, here's the real key is we've got to invest the difference. Now, here's the key. Investing the difference. This is all very, very important. But the problem is that everybody's focused. Everybody in real estate is focused on the first one, right? Oh, we're just going to make more. We're just going to make more. We're just going to make more. It's going to make up for everything. And they spend their lives chasing money. And they spend their lives just going after more, 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 more. And they never figure out how to spend less. And because they never figure out how to spend less, they never have anything left over to invest. And because they never have anything left over to invest, guess what they don't do? Or they don't do enough of. They don't do enough investing. Now, there's a really simple formula on how much you should invest as a real estate agent. Let me make okay. this very clear. So every real estate agent out there falls into one of seven tiers. Okay. So I'm going to give you the tiers. Okay. The tier one is zero to 25 transactions closed per year. Tier two is 25 to 75. Tier three is 75 to 150. Tier four is 150 to 250. Tier five is 250 to 500. Tier six is 500 to 1,000. Tier seven is 1,000 units per year and more. Now, here's the deal. Regardless of which tier you fall in, let's say, let's say I'm in tier one. Okay. I need to be buying real estate. Even though I'm in tier one, I need to be investing in real estate. So if my average sales price in my market is under $400,000, and I'm in tier one, I need to be buying at least one home per year, one rental property per year. 
Okay. If I'm in tier two, I need to be buying two homes a year. If I'm in tier three, I need to be buying three. If I'm in tier four, I need to be buying four and so forth. Right. Mm -hmm. At a bare minimum. Now, I will say this. If I'm in a market where the average sales price is over 400,000, then I need to double that number on how many homes per year I'm buying. Okay. Yeah. Cause you're making the money to do it. And if you don't put it somewhere, like you said, you're, you're spending it. And that's what happens. It just gets spent. It gets blown. It gets spent on whatever. Right. So we've really got to get serious in this business, in this industry. We've got to get serious about becoming our own best client. In fact, everybody should write that down. Become your own best client. I like it. I like right? it. Yeah, definitely. So if we could start doing that, if we could start becoming our own best client. Now, great, again, I'm all about making more money. We teach people at Club Health how to make more money, all that stuff. But there's really five key areas in your life. And I want you guys all to write these down. There's five key areas in life that you need to be building wealth in. First of all, what's the definition of the word wealth? The definition of the word wealth is abundance, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to create an abundance in all five of these key areas. And here they are. And by the way, you'll look at, if you see the compass up on my wall here, look up here. The, the F stands for family, business, financial, health, both physical and mental, and my spiritual life. I'll give it to you again. Oh, there, there it is. Family, business, financial. I feel like the weather guy. <laughs> health, both physical and mental, and your spiritual life. And we're going to have a little cloud formation right over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. For real. That's really great. <laughs> but think about this, right? So in all of these areas, we've got to build wealth in all of these areas. Like think about your family, right? You want to have an abundance of time with your family. You want to have an abundance of love with your family. You want to have an, an abundance of togetherness with your family, right? Absolutely. And so what's that? I said absolutely. Right. And so and that goes for all five of these periods, right? Most of the time, real estate agents, they think coaching should always be focused on the B, right? The business. And, and we do focus a lot on the business. But here's the thing. I know I, I can make a whole bunch of money, but if I don't keep some of it, my financial life actually is a wreck, right? So I've got to make a bunch of money and I got to keep a bunch of money. Then I got to invest it, right? And then we talk about, you know, why is the S, the big S in the middle, right? That's my spiritual life. Because here's the reality. If my spiritual life is messed up, all of them are messed up, right? Mm -hmm. And so the spiritual life is at its core. Now, write this down. Our core value at Club Wealth is something that I think all real estate agents need to be thinking about and need to subscribe to. And that is that no success in the world can compensate for failure in the home, right? No, you're right. Think about that, right? I mean, it's great if we go out and make a bunch of money, but if we're screwing up our families in the process, what is what good does it do us, right? We all say, oh, we're doing this for our family. Well, let's prove that then. Let's actually spend some time with our family. Let's actually make our family a priority without wrecking the business, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't wreck one or the other. It, you got to make sure that you're balancing both. Now, let's get back to the investing piece. Let's get back to building real wealth, okay? So we're going to make more in the business, right? That we're going to spend less money in our personal life and we're going to invest the difference. And here's how we're going to invest. Let me be very clear about how real estate agents need to invest. Okay. First of all, we're going to follow the 1% rule. This is very, very important. The 1% rule essentially says that if I buy the house for $500,000, I need to be able to rent it out for $5,000 a month. This is very, very important, you guys. So that's the 1% rule. If I buy it for $300,000, I'm going to be able to rent it out for $3,000 a month. If a house does not meet these criteria, I won't buy it. Now, a lot of you are saying, well, Michael, that's impossible in my market. You know, if you're in Seattle, for example, very difficult to do. New York, very tough to do, right? Uh, frankly, on the coast, it's very difficult to do. But guess where you can do it? You can do it in the Midwest, right? I buy stuff. In fact, I've bought three in the last two weeks. Uh, two of them close uh, day after tomorrow. Uh, both, you know, all three of these are in the Midwest. All of them meet this rule. All right. So now watch this. Let's assume that I have that. I'm assuming your, your audience, Noel, is predominantly, yeah. if not entirely, real estate agents, correct? Correct. Okay. So let's do this. Real estate agents have an unfair advantage, all right? Let's see mm -hmm. here for mm -hmm. We do. Yes, you do. In a lot of ways, actually. 
Now, number one, real estate agents have an advantage because you guys get to find the very, very best properties before anybody else does. Mm -hmm. And so when you're out there and you find somebody that's willing to sell their house on a subject two, for example, right? Maybe they're willing to just, you know, let somebody else take over payments. Somebody's going to come in and take it over subject to the existing mortgage that might have a, you know, two, three, four percent interest rate. Man, that's fantastic. Find those, buy those all day long. That being said, there's another big advantage that real estate agents have that they don't even know. They're, most of them aren't even aware of. Check this out. Okay. So when I buy a house, let's say I buy that $500,000 house. The government is going to say, okay, $500,000 house, that means 100000 of that is the value of the land. And let's call it $400,000 of that is the value of the improvement. Okay. Now it's not always exactly that ratio, but it's going to be similar to that. All right. Mm -hmm. now here's where it gets really, really interesting. So the government says, Hey, look, what is the improvement? First of all, the improvement is the building, right? This is the, the structure, the, the commercial building, the house, the whatever it's, the, it's what sits on the land, right? That's the improvement. Yes. And the government says, well, that's going to go down in value. So what we're in, by the way, like the, uh, so what it says, they let us do what's called depreciation. So they let us depreciate that value, that $400,000. They let us take a tax deduction on that over the next 27 and a half years. Okay. Now this is where it gets really interesting. All right. So I'm going to depreciate this over 27 and a half years. Now what that means is I can divide 400,000 by 27 and a half and I can essentially deduct that off of my taxable income each year. Now I've got to preface this with, I'm not a CPA, I'm not an attorney, but I, I am freaking rich. I made a lot of money investing in real estate and a lot of money selling it. And I'm telling you right now, I'm showing you how to do the same, all right? Now, should yes. you talk to a CPA or, accountant or an attorney? Sure, but make sure they know what the heck they're talking about because most <laughs> CPAs suck at this. I'm just going to be honest with you. Now, they can figure out depreciation, but Noel, this is where it gets really interesting for full-time real estate professionals. So check this out. There's something called accelerated depreciation. Wow. And so what that meant was I can, in 2022, I could go buy a house for $500,000. I could put my, you know, for 20% for down, it's going to take me, what, $100,000 on that house, right? Mm -hmm. So I spend my $100,000, I buy that house. Then I take uh, that house now, the, the improvement value of 400000 I apply the formula to it, and it's a little bit more complicated than what I'm describing right here, but essentially there's a formula that gets applied, and... Now I get to literally deduct off my taxable income roughly $150,000 on that particular house. So I'm deducting more off my taxable income than it actually cost me for the down payment. Guys, <laughs> it's a good lesson right now, especially tis the season of taxes and 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 agents. We all need some help, I think, learning Dude, how. To best tax deduction on the planet right here. Best deduction there is. Now watch this. So I got to do that in 100% in 2022. That benefit dropped in 23 to 80%, 24, it went to 60%, and so forth until it got down to 0%. Now, here's what happened. Another guy remembered that, oh, by the way, I actually want to get reelected. And so what did he say? He says, oh, hey, I'm going to get on board with the Republicans on this thing, and I'm going to fix this. I don't want it to go away, right? Which originally this whole plan was that it was going to go away. And so he says, hey, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get some of these investors on my side, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to fix it. And, uh, and it just got fixed at between 50 and 60%. I don't know the exact number they fixed it at. Uh, but for uh, the next several years, you're going to be able to take that deduction. For the conceivable future, you'll be able to continue to take this deduction. Really what this means is you need to be buying as much as you can, as fast as you can. But here's the caveat. In order to qualify for this accelerated depreciation, you have to be what's called a full-time real estate professional. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Okay. What it, what qualifies as a full-time real estate professional? It's anyone who is engaged in, in real estate activities, whether it be buying and selling real estate or investing in real estate, for a minimum of 750 hours per year. Okay. Now, that sounds like a lot, but it's really only three and a half hours a day, five days a week. Now, let that sink in for a minute. I know a lot of real estate agents think that's full-time, but the rest of the world <laughs> understands that's not actually full-time work, right? I'm loving this conversation because it's going to give me so much more to think about and do for 2024.
four. <laughs> Keep in mind too, again, there's, there's five ways that real estate helps you build wealth that, uh, that you can't really build in any other way, right? First and foremost, your investment goes up in value, right? So it appreciates in value. But then you get the, the advantage of the tax benefits, the depreciation also. Also, you have a tenant in the house that's paying for that mortgage for you. So they're actually paying the bills for you. And you also have positive monthly cash flow. Yeah. Guys, I mean, in, 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 in addition to that, now you can leverage, and that's the final thing is you get to leverage your money with other people's money, meaning the bank's money. So, cause you can buy a $500,000 asset for a hundred thousand dollars and you're gaining appreciation on your $500,000, not on the hundred thousand dollar investment. I hope everyone's listening. And hopefully they're taking good notes. Story. Well, okay. So let's, let's talk about this though. So what market are you in Noel? I'm in Virginia beach. Virginia. Mm. Well, give me an example <laughs> of the house there. So what does a home go for roughly? 430. 430. The reason I bring this up is because it's important that people understand you've got to meet that 1% rule. If you fail to meet the 1% rule, you're asking for trouble long-term. Mm -hmm. Now let's take it a step further. If you cannot meet the 1% rule in your area, like for example, for you, you know, you pay $435,000 for a house. It needs to rent out for $4,350, right? Yeah. Now, if for any reason that's not possible in your area, well, guess what? Then you need to be looking at other areas. And for some people watching this, they're probably thinking to themselves, oh my gosh, but Michael, I can't make those numbers work in my market. What do I do? Great. Call me. I'll partner with you. Uh, when I say that, I'm picky about who I partner with. I have a no jerks rule, right? <laughs> so, but at the end of the day, I'm always looking for capital partners, right? And what I mean by capital partner is I'm looking for partners who put the money up. Uh, and basically they put the money up for the down payment and the closing costs. And then I mm -hmm. do everything else. I find the properties, I negotiate the properties, I rehab the properties, I find the tenants. I have the tenants lined up before we close. Um, uh, I manage the tenants. I do everything. And then we just split the profits. Uh, oh, I do you're everything. a great partner. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, yeah. We literally do all the work. Uh, and so if you can't find deals like that in your market or just don't want to, you just would rather partner with me. Well, great. Then, then I'll tell you what, let me, can I get my cell phone number? Can we do that? Oh yes, absolutely. Let me give you my guys, my cell phone number. Just send me a text message. Uh, send it to uh, 206-300-6453. 206-300-6453. That's literally my cell phone number. I'm not even kidding. You. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll connect up on Facebook and we'll get to know each other and see if we might make good partners. But at the end of the day, every single person on this call, needs to ask yourself, am I paying taxes? And if the answer is yes, I'm paying taxes, then you're not buying enough real estate. <laughs> I, I mean, it's oh, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing everything you're saying, everything. Yeah. And, and wrote down a lot of it too, while you did your presentation. I'm just like every other viewer right now. I'm impressed. Well, you know, one of the nice things I'm impressed with real estate too. It's fantastic. I'll tell you what impresses me most about it is I'm making money in my sleep. Day in, day out, morning, noon, night, whether I'm awake or not, whether I'm on vacation or not, I'm making money 24-7, 365. It's coming in. And oh, by the way, my rents go up too. And so yeah. every now and then I just, you know, get to raise rent on my properties and all of a sudden my income goes up. And I didn't yeah. have to doesn't love some passive income. That's exactly right. doesn't love sitting on a beach somewhere, <laughs> getting a suntan and like you said, making money. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's possible with real estate investing, right? And yet, why is it that so few real estate agents are actually investing in real estate? Because, because they're, they're spending their money. That's exactly what they're doing. And it's not normally in their business that they're spending it. It's their personal life, right? Guys, uh -huh. if you, look, look, I'm going to go so far as saying this is going to offend some people, but I want to help you get here. So I'm not criticizing. I'm just I, I'm just highlighting what the problem is so that we can work on the solution together. All right. Okay. The problem is that most people on this call are living in a place they shouldn't be living in or driving a car they shouldn't be driving. Yeah. I'm telling you, those are two of the biggest expenses in your life. And so many people are, are living somewhere where, well, let's put it this way. If your passive monthly income from your rental properties is not enough to cover all of your active expenses in your life, mm -hmm. then you need, you need to cut back on your expenses and buy more real estate until that's the case. Because until you get out of the rat race, so to speak, right? Until yeah. you make this the case, you're going to be in that rat race. And so that's the goal. The first goal is get out of the rat race. Absolutely. Yeah. So 
we covered the investing and and how we can get out of the rat race. Um, but you know, what else can agents be doing to get to that point? So, you know, to start with the investment part, you know, you do need to be having some transactions. 2024 is definitely an enormous year of change. Um, what are you suggesting agents do right now to be successful? This is a fantastic year. I'll tell you right now, 2024 for, for those that are paying attention and those that are in the right habits, yeah. right? Write that word down habits. Okay. <laughs> So for those that are in the right habits, 2024 is going to be a fantastic year because so many agents are not in the right habits. So many agents are literally in terrible habits right now. Uh, I'll give you a great example of the people watching this call. Ask yourself, are you making at least four hours of calls, outbound calls every day? And I'll bet most of the people watching this are not. But guys, here's the reality. If you want to make money this year, you got to be in that habit. You got to be making your four hours of calls a day at a minimum. It's hard. And, you know, and people are like, Oh, but I'm going to make it on TikTok, pointing at stuff and making money. You know, I'm going to make it on social media or YouTube or whatever. Well, great. Well, while you're waiting for that to finally kick off and start to work, guess yeah. what you need to do? Make you calls. need to work. Yeah. You yeah. got to make calls. If you're in tier one or tier two right now, you're going to be making four hours of calls a day. In fact, even if you're in tier three, you're going to be making calls. Now, when I get into tier three, probably an hour out of those four is recruiting calls, right? Mm -hmm. but, but hey, guys, the reality is you're going to have to pick up that phone. You're going to have to make a bunch of calls. And, yeah, do the work. Yeah, it's going to be work. Yeah. And so, uh, and so I would suggest also that those calls need to be made at eight o'clock in the morning. Okay, and definitely. So, yeah. Definitely. You want to get them before everyone else gets them. Well, not just that, but the fact of the matter is that if you don't make the calls at eight o'clock in the morning, guess what? You're not you just, going to. You just won't do it. <laughs> it's it's sunny and hot. Summer's coming and everyone's going to want to go hop on a boat or go to the beach. And all of a sudden they didn't make their calls. And then all of a sudden it's Thursday and they did that four days in a row. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. That's I know. what happens. Yeah. 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 You know, I look at Austin, you know, I, I think uh, last week, you know, with my, the first uh, week and a half of the month, he already had 10, 12 listings, uh, you know, incredible. well, and I'm not saying that to brag about Austin. I'm just well, saying, he should. That, he should. That, well, I, mean, I, appreciate okay, that. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but really the reason I say that is because in fact, Hey, come here, look at this. Speaking of the freaking devil. Look, he's walking by my office right now. Hey, come in here real quick. Yeah, I come say hi, Austin. Let's make sure I'm quoting accurate numbers for him. So awesome. We're on a Hi, podcast. Austin. Okay. So this is the Espresso Agent podcast. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, Austin uses Espresso Agent, by the way, and freaking loves it for the neighborhood. Is it the neighborhood data? Is that what yeah. you're using it for? Neighborhood search. Mm -hmm. Neighborhood search. Yeah. And so I Austin. I want to have you back on. Huh? I want to have you back on. Yeah, yes. I on a little while ago, like a year, a yeah. year and a half or so. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been yeah. way too long. Uh, and so update us on your numbers. So this year so far, month. So right now we are the 16th of the month. And uh, so I'm curious as to what year to date and month to date. What, how many listings you got? I don't know excluding REO, but I know year to date, I'm like 44, 45 listings. Um, month to date. And this is, hold on, this is April 16th. Okay, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, month to date, uh, 11 listings, 10 retail, one REO. And then week to date, one. Wait, so, no. Yes. Retail, and today's Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get it. You'll get more. All right. So the point being, and, and so watch this. Awesome. He, did, he has not heard what I just told you guys. Watch this. Awesome. <laughs> What is the one thing that you think sets you apart from everybody else? Why are you having such success? Uh, is that your, I mean, can no, I want to. No trick. Yeah. No trick. Yeah, there's yeah. no trick. I just want to know. I'm like, just what? dialing every day. I mean, I haven't been setting as many points as I should be. I mean, I'm on like two a day right now. But how many do you normally set? Do you normally how I mean, many how many hours of calls do you make, and how many points do you set? Four point four hours a day of calls. And my goal, I mean, I'd, I'd love to get thirteen to fifteen a week, which has been realistic lately. Well, I don't know why it is, but when I'm setting less appointments, I have a higher show up rate and I have a higher close. I have a higher show up rate, which leads to a higher closing rate, per se. So yeah. it's, there's a burden in both hands of I need to set more appointments, but then if I set too, I think it's because I set them too far out. Yeah. So, like, for example, next week is listing agent boot camp in Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not trying to set appointments right now. I want to set good follow ups because if I set them two weeks out, well, no one's going to show up. Right. And then, and then the likelihood of them actually rescheduling, it decreases dramatically. 
So it's, I think, yeah, I set one appointment today, but it's just, I'm trying not to set appointments. So no, I totally you, understand. Travels comes up. You're you're 100 right because I do the same thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you're still doing the follow up, and then you're but you're just not pushing for the appointment. You're making the same number of calls. You're just having you're 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 you know when you, when you're pushing up against an event where you're going to be gone for a week. You're yeah. Making, you're making the same number of calls. You're just making sure that the reason for the call is not necessarily to set an appointment, unless somebody's like really hot to try, and you're like, okay, I'm going to beat them before I go. Yeah. And so, like, but it also comes down to the expectation I set on the phone call with them is that, and using your evidence of success or why they should meet with you at that point is like, look, hey, you know, I'm actually heading out of town to speak at this real estate conference. When I'm back from speaking at this conference, I would love to show you why X, Y, Z, why more people trust my team and I to help them sell their house compared to just about anybody else in the entire state. Yes. Okay. While you're both in there and you've already brought it up, please tell us about your upcoming conference. So that's Listing Agent Bootcamp. It's Club Wealth's Listing Agent Bootcamp. It happens once a year. This is uh, this year we're in Denver, Colorado, April 23rd and 24th. And uh, thank you. He's got to go. Austin's one of the speakers at the event. He's got to get back on his calls. That's how that's how committed this kid is. To oh, I know. I interviewed him. It was it was 6 a.m. his time mm -hmm. when I did the interview because yeah. he wanted to do it before his calls and his role playing. So oh, he's Pretty not messing around. Yeah. No. Pretty but that's the level of discipline you have to have if you want to be successful in this environment. There's a lot of competition out there right now, uh, mm -hmm. and they're and they're not going to take it easy on you. So you got to be aggressive no. with the process. No, it's very simple. You do it, or someone else will. That's right. <laughs> well, long story short, we've got Listing Agent Bootcamp coming up. It's a great event. Uh, it's uh, there's about 300 agents. Actually, I think we have 350 agents registered for the event right now. Uh, it's in Denver, Colorado. It's actually technically sold out. And so here's what we did. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you though. We, 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 we are officially sold out. You can get online tickets, right? Mm -hmm. You can, you can watch it online. We record all the sessions and we live stream all the sessions. And so you can watch it online. Uh, and for the online ticket, it's $497 for the two day event. Um, I will say this, I get cancellations. And when I say cancellations, there's always somebody that has a medical thing come up or, you know, a wedding they forgot about or who knows what the freak's going on. But for whatever reason, <laughs> last night, I know, right? Yeah, sometimes it's their own. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but occasionally you get somebody. That, we always have somebody that just before the event says, hey, I can't go. Does anybody want my ticket? And so I'm happy to, you know, if somebody really wants to go to the event and can make it happen, I'll tell you the average production of the people in that room, the average agent does over in, in that room does over 200 transactions a year. Uh, and there's over 300 of them in the room. It's, it's the room you want to be. be. Yeah. It's the place. place you want to be. Be. It's if you only go to one event this year, that's the event you need to go to. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So if somebody's interested and uh, would like to just, you know, reach out and uh, I, I hate, I, I don't know why I'm giving out my cell phone to everybody on your call, but uh, <laughs> But just, calls. You're gonna be extra busy. Okay. <laughs> what you can do is you can go online. You can get if you just go to clubwealth.com forward slash L A B C, that stands for listing agent boot camp, right? Clubwealth.com forward slash L A B C. You can order the online ticket. If you want to show up in person, again, they're sold out, but I frequently will hear about you know somebody that can't make it last minute. If we get one of those, we'll put you on a wait list. If you want to be on that wait list. Just send me a text message to my cell phone, 206-300-6453, 206-300-6453. So, Sounds fabulous. As much energy as you have brought to this show today, I feel like just getting on and doing the online thing is a huge investment and opportunity for everybody. So yeah. one way or the other, people, get your ticket. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Michael. Well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Really enjoyed this. Have a great day. You bet. You too, Noel.